welcome to Suffolk Salt's podcast where I let's knit. Well, it's been so long since I did a podcast that I virtually need a timeline from, say, July. <laughs> but I won't. I'll try to keep it as short as I can. Um, welcome to Suffolk Salt's podcast. Um, I don't know what number it is. I do know it's Monday, November the 5th. And... Um, it's a lovely, lovely day here in Suffolk, uh, in Ipswich. The sun's shining. My husband did his morning walk around the park and he said it was lovely. So um, that's good, isn't it? So a big welcome to everybody. Big welcome to returning viewers, new viewers. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Ravelry as Suffolk Socks. Um, so you can find me on all of those forums. So... Let's start off with fours. Well, I have got a few actually, but it's been that long that um, they've either been gifted or what have you. Now, this is the Hummel, Hummel, Hummelus, Hummelus, Hummelus. And I'll show you this first. I knit this using some Norwegian alpaca. Let's see if I've got another one up here, which is this one. And this is what my husband bought me when he was in Norway. And I've got to say, this jumper, I absolutely love it. Um, I wear it all the time. I risk dehydration because I'm so hot in it, but I don't care. Um, I don't think I did any modifications on it. The only thing I did do was, I didn't do, see these little dots along here. Let's see if I can get this down a bit. These little dots along here, which is the beginning of the pattern should have go along oh, there should go along there now i don't know why but i know i made a conscious decision not to put them in and i don't know why i did that but you know doesn't really matter i wish i had now but i don't know why i made that decision so anyway this is it i love it um i wear it all the time let's go that and my Winterfell by um, Skin Deer Knits. So yes, so now I've shown you that. I'm going to have to take it off. I think my dress is clean. <laughs> I'm all dishevelled this morning. I've just, uh, last yesterday we came back from Yarnporium, which I'll talk about later on. Um, and we got back at about 11 o'clock yesterday morning. Had a cup of coffee. I slept till about 2 woke up had another cup of coffee slept till about four five then we had a takeaway at about six o'clock and apparently i slept till about 11 <laughs> to the point that i even put the telly on i requested to watch something on the telly which is a rarity for me that um when i woke up something else was on and Jonathan, my husband, had come over and got the remote control <laughs> because big brother had come on <laughs> and we don't watch big brother so yes so, um, and then I was like shattered when I woke up. This one has virtually killed me off. Um, so, right, so that's all um, thoughts. I am modelling a Marks and Spencer's dress, and that's far too big for me, I know, but I love it. And I would never wear it on its own. So, it's always got like, a jumper on or a cardigan on it. So, let's go to thoughts. And it's shameful how many I've got. Let's just grab a quick slip of my coffee. Which is just cheap and cheerful. Nescaf. So, where do where have I been? Right. My first things I will show you are what I got when I was at Shetland Wall Week. I was lucky enough to go to Shetland Wall Week with um, my lovely friends Tony and Emma. Um, it was a right laugh. Tony picked me up at three o'clock. Why in the morning? Why on earth we decided to get the early flight? I do not know, but we did. So we're at Heathrow at seven, having a croissant and a latte and what have you. But it was lovely. She was lovely company. And then when we got to Shetland, we met Emma, and who is just as lovely. And um, we had a great week. We didn't live in each other's pockets. Um, we did, well, I did spend a significant sum. Not, not, I stuck to my budget. 
and um, I didn't go mental on buying crazy on going buying the wool I, I bought but I bought everything with a project in mind my only impulse buy is actually my favorite buy and that is um at the beginning when I got there I bought this book which is the Shetland Wool Week annual that they put together and this is full of just beautiful designs there is not a design in here that I wouldn't want to knit I wouldn't be happy to knit but what I wanted to I bought it for this and this was my impulse buy this is the Tree Yorks jumper by Alicia Malcolmson and it is just a top down um colour work jumper um knit in Shet Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift and the shop was just around the corner from us they were absolutely lovely in that shop I went for I was I was um I, I didn't intend to buy the colours that the jumper is knit in because I'm not keen on bright yellows you know they make me look happy, like I've been dead for a while and um but when I got there the yellow wasn't canary yellow like I was expecting it was mustard so I bought the colours that the jumper was knitting in the book and it is mustard and pebble and um I absolutely love it now when I've been joining the wool I'm normally you know like join the new ball in and weave it in and what have you but I decided to do the spit and slice now am I the only person who, find, who finds that absolutely disgusting I know I should just dip it in a you know cup of water and what have you but if I put it in my mouth then it's like oh I feel really sick but the thought it's just it's just disgusting so um yes it's not something I would do in public I don't think but um so yeah, this is it. Absolutely lovely. The um, design in the the way it's written is that it's colour work throughout. Just little, can you see the little, um, oh, right, where am I here? The little grey dots. Oh, I'll have to get this right. How do they do the weather? The um, dots knit throughout. I haven't done that. Pure laziness on my part. Um, because I know that I'd been knitting away and I'd get away with myself and think, oh, bugger I forgot to put that line of colour work in so I just omitted it completely somebody I was with when I was up in Cumbria they said they might do just a pearl bump but then I thought even that was a bit dodgy with me you know um they could be all over the place <laughs> um but yeah absolutely love it I'm knitting these on my likey needles Vicky likey well those ones and they are living in my this project is living in my fringe bag my brown fringe bag on Jonathan bought me for my birthday and this here oh is that it there was a, um, a gift from Emma we all give each other a little gift when we're made up at um, Shetland so yes so that's my first whip my other whip is another um, work out of uh, this magazine oh there it's and it is called the Banks Fleur Mitts yeah these they're lovely. They're just a little uh, fingerless mitt that's done in colour work. And um, I'm using, again, Shetland Spin Drift. And these are the four colours that is in. It's not the colours in the book, but I love them. I bought a, I think I bought about 10 odd balls of colours. Um, and this is the first one. Now, I think these are definitely going to be small for me. I wish um, the thumb placement, I don't think, is very good where I've got this. Let's see if I can get it on. So the thumb placement is there. But my thumb joint is further up, so I'll have to see. Um, but these will be a present for somebody in my family. But yeah, I'm right into colour work at the moment. Um, I've always loved colour work for years. You know, before Ravelry and... Um, Instagram I always did colour work when in me early knitting years um so yeah so I love them they're lovely and they're kept in my Shetland bag it seemed appropriate to keep it in my Shetland wool week project bag 
a reminder. So yes, yeah, so that's my other, oh look, leaving me needles, that's my other project. Um, and then they're on higher, higher needles. I think they're on a three mil, I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. Let's have a look, see if I should do. 3.5. 3 so, right, so that's that. Whilst one of my purchases at Shetland was always going to be a jumper for my husband. So Johnny, if you're looking at this, just pretend you haven't seen it. Now, this is the Marikanish, I can't remember what it's called, the Mar Marikanish by Kate Davies. And it's a tank top or a vest. We call them tank tops. And it's knit using the Jameson's and Smith Heritage Collection. And again, do you know what? I went with the colours that was on the um, pattern. I don't know where the other colour is. Must have finished with it. It'll be somewhere. So they're the colours I went for. And this is it so far. This is my secret knit. This is kept upstairs in my shop room so that I can come up. Well, it takes me about half an hour to do one round. But um, I'm hoping, that's the back, I'm hoping I get this done for Christmas. Realistically, what Christmas? Who knows? But, you know, I don't know where that other ball's gone. Well, that's going to bug me now. But never mind. I can't have finished the ball. And that is kept in my new acquisition. The pink fringe bag. Oh, I bloody love it. And they've got all my pins on. And Amy, bloody enemy, I met Amy in Cumbria, gifted me this. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely love it. So they're all kept in. Oh, my tummy's rumbling. Oh, look at there. It's, it's in there. And that's in. I got that at um, Jameson's. Jameson's and Smith. I keep getting them all mixed up. You know, so I just kept calling one Spindrift shop and one the other shop. Uh, the Wool Brokers, apparently. That's what it's referred to, I think, in Shetland. Um, Shetland was lovely. It was really lovely. Um, the weather was good to us. It just rained... Well, I'm saying it just rained twice. We just got drenched twice. <laughs> Poor Tony. She got soaked to the skin on one day. I don't know how she got more wet than us, but she seemed to. And um, it was lovely. There was the hub, which was in the, the um, textiles museum. Um, everybody, I think everybody had a tendency to stick with their group. Um, look, it was It was lovely. And um, we did a talk on, um, when I went to Susan Crawford talk, which was amazing, on our new vintage Shetland book. Um, oh, that was just, or our new vintage collection book, sorry, um, Inspire. And it was, there were copies of the jumpers that were in the museum. That was amazing. And the stories to that. Um, I did an evening with Hazel Tyndall where she was going through her mum's diary. So that was really interesting. We did the Maker's Market on the Saturday and um, had lunch there and what have you. And on the Saturday night, we went to the final ore. And honestly, it was my nearly my final ore. I was perished. Um, I was, you know, and I was well wrapped up, but I was not prepared for the cold. That could be because prior to that, I've got a problem with me left side so I walk I sometimes walk with a walking stick um so I wasn't able to move around as much as what I normally would but I was just perished and then um we came home on the Sunday I was ready for home it was a lot I'd been away for like um eight nine days and then um but it was lovely it was a lovely break and it was lovely spending a week with Emma and Tony but when I came back I was back for two days and then I went off to Cumbria to the knitting retreat in Cumbria to Helen Stewart's Curious Handmade retreat which is held um twice a year up in Penrith and um that was just as lovely um we met lots of new people and um people I know um and I was there with Emma again Emma and I shared a room so that was fun and um it was lovely I had a lovely time I will say me being away from home for that long was too much I'm, I'm a real home bird um, I love being with Jonathan and if I had a choice of going away with anybody it would be my husband 
a uh, bit soppy, isn't it? But um, I just felt I'd been away for a long time from him and from um, me norm. So when I got back, I was pleased pleased to be back. I had a lovely time. Um, I was worried on the Sunday about coming home because I had my crutch and my we, me case because um they always do the road the, tri the rail works don't they on the Sundays and they were all chaotic but Jonathan phoned us up when I was in uh, Penrith to say he would drive into London and um, meet up with one of our daughters who lives there have breakfast with her and then he would come along and get us and drive me home which was lovely because I got to see our Phoebe as well that was nice. she brought a knitting for me to fix honestly I've had a belly full of knitting after a fortnight of intense knit groups and what have you so when she brought a knitting it was like ugh but never mind so right, oh, one of the so one of the things I got when I was at Mel Mel maybe, we were gifted a shawl designed by Helen. It's now on Ravelry. It's called the Rewilding Shawl, and this is it. It's a asymmetrical shawl with three little tassels, and I do have the tassels. Where have I put my tassels? Oh, tassels! I made my tassels first. In case I wanted to make the shawl bigger. And the yarn is from um, the Fibre Company, who sponsor Helen's event. Um, and I haven't got a tag, but it's the Meadow range. And this one is called Ballet Slipper, Lady Slipper, Lady Slipper, I think. Lady Slipper. Yeah, Lady Slipper. And um, this is it. I haven't got much done on it. At the retreat, some of the women, they finished theirs. And I think Jane, Jane finished hers first and she got a prize. <laughs> she got a Libby Enemy bag and some um, cocoa knits. I'm just looking because I bought some cocoa knits stitch markers. But this is lovely. It's a heavy, it's, it's a lace weight, I think. Let me just, let me get it right. It's a heavy lace weight to a very light fingering. 374 metres and it's a mixture of merino wool, baby llama, silk linen <clears throat> and you just need one skein and as always with Helen's um, designs it's line by line so you can take off as you're going along but yes absolutely lovely I'm hoping to get this finished I think this might be a present for someone but I don't know if she watches my podcast so I'm not going to say who it's for and that is in my Le Bien-Aimé bag, which um, Amy gifted us all at the retreat, which is lovely. So that's going to live on top of my printer, that's it. <laughs> right, let's get on with my socks. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Suffolk socks, all about my socks. Right. My shrug with a shrug is normal. No, my shrug with a shrug is normal. So I've been very good keeping my sock whips, you know, sock work down to a number. Right, so I've got four socks on the needles. And these are all work socks, really. My first sock on the needle is <coughs> just the all vanilla socks that I've done. And this is in my new colourway, Sugar Tits. And I think I've got, I saw quite a few at the weekend. I think I've got three, three left. It's already balled up for you. And it's just a plain vanilla sock um, with a heel flap and garter tab. And and actually, I've done this, a kitchen at home. I don't very often do a kitchen at home. But um, when I got to the toe, I didn't have any stitch markers for to divide my stitches up, or just to keep us right. Um, and I was hacky lazy and couldn't be bothered to come upstairs to get my stitch markers. So I just did it like that. And this is my, I'm on to the second one. I was well on the way to finishing my second one. And then I measured it up, I offered it up to the other one. And it was about an inch and a half short. I don't know how I've done that. Well, it, we all do that because I look at it and think it's longer than it is. So yeah, so I've lived, I've loved doing this. So I'm on to the heel flap. So once I get past them, they should be good. And my other one is again, just a vanilla sock. And this is what I've been knitting when I've been at Yarn Porium this weekend, where I've, where I've been vending. And this is in my con in a scattered petal colourway. And this is just a, it's like a 
it's not yellow. It's like a really nice, soft cream. It's not natural. I know it's not natural because I did a, you know, I dyed the whole lot first. And it's just got tiny scattering of pastel colours. And I'm doing a fish lips kiss heel. No, I'm not. I'm doing an afterthought heel on this. I don't know why. It's just, I couldn't be bothered with the pickup and everything when I was standing knitting at the show. And it's, I've just bolted up. I think, I think what I must have done, it must have been caked up at one point and then it was knitting it as, I was knitting it as a shawl. And I decided I wanted it as socks because it is for my shop. So yeah, so I love that. And there are my chow goos. And they are living in my sockless bag which is six pounds and available in the shop. I think I've just got about 10 of these left. Um, I sold loads at the weekend. Um, so yeah, I've got them down at six pounds as a, a nice, you know, price. Well, it's a Christmas bag and this is just my personal. This is me personally. I don't like to spend a lot of money on something that is a Christmas, a seasonal thing. Um, because I'll not use this come January. I'll not be using this. Or I'll not be using my um, knit. Well, actually, I will use my knitness for life, not just for Christmas bags, but not for softness because these were aimed at Christmas. Right, so my other two sock projects. Oh, sorry. I'm on a wheelie chair and I think one of the screws has fallen out the back. So if I sit right back, I'm going to go A or a T. So my other work in progress is socks. And this, again, is on my new sock yarn. And it's a commercial sock yarn. It's a hot socks yarn. And it is um, Aberdeen? Aberdeen? Olsberg? Os Aberdeen? Olsberg. Olsberg. This is it. It's a six-ply sock yarn. And I'm knitting it on three mil needles. And it's a self-striping heavier yarn. It's absolutely lovely. Now, I've knit, I will tell you this because it's not a rocket, it's um, 3 mil needle, 50 stitches, 25 stitches on the heel, pink, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Now, um, I think the next socket, for, this fits me lovely. Um, so, for my husband, I think I'll do a 56 stitch cast on, but stick to the 3 mil, and um, it's 150 meter, 150 grams, sorry. And it is 300 and, why do I, 390 metres. And this, the, um, the Olsberg collect range is, um, self striping. And the Aberdeen section, collection, is plain. Let's see if I've, I've got some here, because I've been packing it away. So, yeah. Excuse the rustler. This is the, um, Aberdeen. Yeah, there's not much of this left actually, but um, I saw loads of this when I was at the um, yarn porium. I actually was surprised because I thought people would go more for the self striping, and what I mean, but they didn't, they went more for this. Um, so yeah, so if you want some, hurry up and get it. It's nine pounds a ball, but I love it. So I have a few lads landed on my stash shelf. And my final sock cast on is a Zalba ball. And I've knit this for Jonathan, my husband, because he's his hand knit socks are looking a bit shabby. And again, just a vanilla sock. With him I do, with men I do a uh, rib. And all I've done is I have a new design out called Same But Different. I've taken some of the details out of that pattern and just added them into this one. Just to break it up a little bit. Um, but it fits him lovely. We've tried it on. So I need to crack on and get that one done. I think I'm I am on the heel flap. I'm not really that keen on the heel flap. I think it's the heel flap that causes me second sock syndrome. But there you go. I'm on the heel flap, and once I get by that, I'll rattle it off. And that is living. That's it, cake job. Look. That comes like that. And that again is living in my fringe bag. This is the camouflage one. I don't think that's the official name for it. But um, I got this for Christmas of Jonathan. Jonathan always buys me a fringe bag for Christmas, the new colourway that's out. So that's that. I have got one more thing on the go that I'm going to show you. This is like just 
gets picked up and it's just at the very early stages. And this is um, the Knit Vent. Now it's Knit Vent 2017. I'm always behind the times, but I get there in the end. I'm definitely the tortoise, not the hare in the knitting community. And this is Helen Stewart's Land of Sweet Cow. Land of Sweets Cow. Now I don't do minis. I don't buy minis or anything. So, um, but because I've got the shop and when I dye a pool, I always knit one of the, the skeins up that I've dyed um, and it was hot to see what it looks like. So I've obviously got quite a bit of 50 gram to 70 grams of wool and it's, they're all in here. And this is living in my Blue Bee Studios bag that I got from Elizabeth Doherty. And I've just decided to pick it, pick it up as in when. Um, she's got a lovely one out I mean it's a dust of the new one that's out for 2018 but I thought well I've started this and see how we get on now I'm not very good at random <laughs> I'm a bit of a you know I'm easy going but when it comes to me colour work I'm a bit of a control freak <laughs> so I said to my husband put your hand in and pick out a colour and he will ask it oh I don't like that one do it again <laughs> so do it again I'm like do you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to have to pick. And uh, so, yes, I've got some lovely colours. So I'll be... They all seem to be quite soft colours. Um, I don't know who this is going to be for. I don't know if it's going to get finished for Christmas. Actually, I think this might be for my daughter-in-law. All my three girls... Well, no, it is not my girl. She's my daughter-in-law. But the three Walters ladies in my family, excluding me... Are all very knit worthy. Um, Lydia, my daughter in law, sews, um, so she often makes stuff. She makes lovely bags. She made me that bag there, I use all the time. That usually has a work a work in progress for our Matilda, my granddaughter. Then our Lucy, who is my eldest daughter, she's fabulous. Fabulous. She knits, she sews, she weaves. Um, she's an illustrator. Um, in fact, she's just had an overlocker arrive at my house this morning. That could come in quite handy, couldn't it? Um, so she's very knit worthy, but you know, she knits a lot for herself these days. She's knitting a lovely um jumper that she wants to get finished because she's going to Berlin for just before Christmas with her boyfriend. Our Phoebe, I wouldn't say she's a knitter, she's a makeup artist in London, very arty and what have you. But she started knitting and she's knitting a, just a plain black scarf from using some toft alpaca wool that I've got. And she's doing really well, doing really well. So we often have um, in-depth conversations, me trying to explain how she joins up a, you know, a new ball. And um, she's good, she's, good. she's doing really well. I'm thrilled i'm thrilled that everybody in my family my husband and my son not a chance there is no way on this earth they would ever knit and i don't want my husband to knit i don't want him to because he'll probably be better than me at it <laughs> so he's not so no you don't need to knit anyway he wouldn't knit so there you go in fact this weekend right so i'll get on the yarn for you being the yarn for you this weekend I was bloody shattered. Um, we went and stayed up on Thursday night. The, it, started, it was Friday and Saturday. We stayed up Thursday night and we went and stayed um, in this hotel, right? I can only liken my bedroom to Captain Kirk's on the Starship Enterprise. It seemed to be moulded out of plastic. Spotlessly clean. Couldn't fault it. But um, on the walls, there was dockets. And the dockets were for to put bits and bobs in. Now, to me, it looked like a bloody climbing wall where you walk up it like this. But there you go. Um, the bathroom. So you went in. There was the bed. We had to climb over the bottom of the bed to get into the bed. So when I sat on my side of the bed and looked at, to the bottom of the room, was a glass door. And that was the toilet. Now. I have been married 30 years. I've been with my husband 35, 36 years. But nobody sees me sitting on the toilet. It just isn't going to happen. Fair enough, it was frosted. It was frosted. 
So, <laughs> we had towels hanging down. Because I didn't want to say him on the toilet either. So then that, that was that. The toilet, you couldn't actually use the toilet. Well, you could use the toilet. But you couldn't sit on it straight. Because my knees opened the toilet door because I've got long legs. And, anyway, so that was that. But it was perfectly functional. Compact and beige was the same for the weekend. Anyway, but the staff were lovely. It was the Point A Hotel on... Westminster Bridge Road, really, really lovely. They couldn't have been friendly and it couldn't have been cleaner. So we stayed there. Then we went up to the Royal Festival Hall and met our youngest daughter, who lives in London. And funnily enough, we met her, but then she came back to Ipswich for the weekend because they were taking my their niece, my son's daughter, and my son and his wife, they all went to a fireworks. And then on Saturday night, Matilda was sleeping at Auntie Lucy's. So Phoebe wanted to come up for that. So we did that. That was lovely. But the Friday we got to the, we got an Uber to the Westminster Central Hall. And Strode's, yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, it was there. Where, where, where your emporium was. Got set up and everything. Um, it was fine. I was shattered. My leg was killing us. And I did have my crutch with us, but it was killing us. Um, met some. Oh, it was lovely. It was so lovely to meet everybody, um, who came to see us, and it was lovely to put a face to the and meet people in person that just live in me phone. And um, they were absolutely Everybody was absolutely lovely. We were next to a shop called Ida's House. Ida's House in wasn't very far away, but oh, she Jane was just a delight to be a booth buddy with. Um, really funny. Um. Very, very nice. And I'll show you one of my purchases that I got. Well, the only purchase I bought, I got from her. Um, yes, it was just really lovely. I um, brought selections of wool and um, some of my patterns. So everybody got a free pattern when they bought some indie dyed yarn from Mamie Yarn Tart Yarn. And um, I had a great time. I got up on the, sun, the Saturday... Because I've got a problem with my left leg and what have you. I don't know what's going on. Um, my right leg, which I'd obviously been using more, I can't feel my toes. I still can't feel my toes. I still numb. And I keep going around and hitting it, thinking, can I feel my foot? And I think, well, I know I'm doing it because I'm hitting it with my other foot. But it's like, anyway. So I'll see how that goes on. So, and I didn't take my crutch because I knew what well, I'm going to have to come back over London. Um, and honestly, I am a health. I should have a health warning with that crutch. So, um, my leg was killing us by about, well, it was just really killing us. So, um, by the time it was like finishing, um, I was ready for home. Um, everybody was really lovely. I had only one lady, um, looking at me shop and she said, she turned around to her friend and said, well, I don't know who the hell would knit socks. And, well, I don't think she said hell. No, I don't know. Anyway, she said, I don't know anybody on it who knits or who would knit socks and I said to her well you'd be surprised because quite a lot of people knit socks and she says well not in London they don't and I'm like but she was a very lovely lady and I was like thinking oh well I knit socks and I've sold quite a bit of sock yarn and all my friends knit socks and I know quite a few people who design socks so that live in London and one half of us was a little bit deflated but then I thought of all the other lovely customers I'd had who'd come over for the knit socks. So there you go. But it's deflating, isn't it? When somebody comes up and says, well, I wouldn't knit socks. I don't know why people knit socks. But there you go. It was good. And then that night, on the night time when we came home, we went back up to Westminster. No, we didn't. Kensington Road. Because we met um, some friends, Giovanni and Anna, for supper. They were over from Italy um, for a few days. So we met them. And then we went back to the hotel and collapsed. We were absolutely shattered. But the neck, but the good thing is our hotel was right above a Costa Coffee. So I was up at the crack of dawn, <laughs> get me clothes, I'm going down and having an extra large latte, or get me going. And we came out. So the Yarn Porium was a really good event. I thought it was well organised. Um the people, the Alison and Rachel who organised it were really helpful. Um, 
there were some beautiful, well, they were all beautiful stalls. Um, but I had to be restrained. And actually, I didn't have time to go and look around. I did go to look at the John Arbin for some knit by numbers, but they didn't have it with them. And in all fairness, it was a good thing because I wouldn't really have knit it by the time I seen them in March in Edinburgh. But what I did buy was, on the stall next to me, Sarah, who is, let me just get this, Sarah Good, Goodwin Designs, had designed this shawl pan Odette. Oh, and it, I had, I'd had my eye on it and what have you, but I'd been sitting talking to Sarah for quite a while. Um, we both had a seat. We were both shattered by that point. And I had to buy it because she was so lovely and it just made it seem so much nicer buying it when you'd sat and chat to the lady who knit it. And this is in the... Isaga Isaga Spinny Tweed and the Alpaca. Now, I think I don't because it's a paid four pack. I think you knit it with holding it both together. But it was so simple, it's just a plain triangle shawl and um, with a lovely um lace border right up my street. So that is going to be for me. And I bought that from Ida's house. I will do them a shout out. because uh, She was lovely. Really, really lovely. So yeah. So they were my purchases at um, Yarnporium. There were some lovely ones. I was desperate to buy some from Walcott Yarns. Um, Carmen was there and she had all her new colours. And um, But do you know what? And I will get some eventually. I hadn't done enough research for it and I didn't have time to go and look at the patterns that um, supported that wool and I thought well I'm not going to buy it blind um, but that is on my list of maybe a Christmas buy from one of my, well from my husband <laughs> for Christmas, I'll buy it for him. So that's it, that's all I've been up to. Um, I haven't really been up to much, I don't set the world on fire me, I'm a bit of a plodder and this morning I have to do my accounts, apparently. Oof. I haven't been adding something into my accounts that I should have done. So I've got 12 months bank statements to go through to amend. Oh, shoot me now. I hate doing accounts. I don't think anybody does. I don't even like doing my own, you know, like me. Oh, but oh God. Anyway, so that's going to be my plan tomorrow. It's either that or the ironing. So far, the ironing's winning. <laughs> But um, these need, that needs to be done, so I'll do that. Um, I will just show you one one of the things I did do for the um retreat was um, I got my pattern printed up. Isn't that stinking adorable? So this you will be giving if you buy two bowls of mondum from me, a speckled and a plain. I will include one of these patterns for you to knit my design up free of charge failing that the four pound um it is on it is on ravelry i have such a hard time putting stuff on ravelry i'm hopeless and that's my other one let's go fly a kite this was really popular actually at the retreat at the um fiber festival this weekend this is my let's go fly a kite and you just need one skein so anybody buying one skein will be gifted this one. Oh, you might one of the other ones. I've got a few others that I've had printed up, but they're my favourites at the minute. So there you go. That's everything. Um, I'm going to finish my coffee. Well, I might leave it actually because I'm going up to the pub for a cup of coffee in a minute. We have Nick Group on a Monday for the Woolpack and Ipswich. Everybody's welcome. It's completely ex inclusive. Um, there's no nobody runs it. It's just a group of ladies. We all get together. If you want to come, you come. If you don't, you don't. If you want coffee, get it. If you don't, well, yeah, you you do have to buy a coffee because we're there, and um, they do breakfasts and everything. But I'm just gonna have a coffee and a flapjack. So right, so hopefully I'll get another podcast in by Christmas, and hopefully I'll have finished my well a few of my jumpers. There's not a chance in hell of finishing John's tank top. But I might have done a few more rounds on it. So anyway, stay safe. Happy knitting. 
and um, thank you for all the lovely comments that um, I get on my thing on YouTube. Um, they're greatly appreciated and they always give me a bit of a buzz when people say they like my podcast. So thank you. Bye.